Boom, recording. How's it going, guys? So, as you can see, I'm not in Shetland. There is trees and there's green all around me. It is, however, still raining, but I am in the Perthshire and Kinross area of mainland Scotland. I've also been down the road to York where I picked up some roof racks and my new roof tent, which you're going to hopefully see a lot of over the next few days or episodes. I'm not sure how I'm going to film my trip away. But at the minute, so like I said, I'm at Persia and I'm meeting up with a really good mate of mine, Jake Swindles, who's also known as Wescapades on social media. And we've been deer stalking a good lot of times over the years, but luckily we're meeting up today and we're going to go and shoot a buck. Um, is the plan hopefully he's there we don't know and then after today i think we're going to head across to the west coast of scotland maybe towards oban and do some diving there and camping and roof tenting and catching cooks and i'm going to take you with me but for now i can't go deer stalking like this that's better right let's get out there <laughs> just got to the farmland that we're going to be shooting on and deer stalking as you can see it is pissing it down um hopefully this stops as the deer will most likely be tucked in uh as we probably should be as well as soon as it stops though they should come out to feed is what we're hoping so we're kind of just setting up having a brew under a tarp and uh we should all settle down then we can get out and uh, have a scan about Whilst it's still pissing some rain, hopefully it looks like it's starting to clear up. I thought I'll explain a little bit of my setup. I'm using my own Tika T3 Lite stainless steel, just helps with the rain and everything like that. Plus, I used to have it for work every single day and I could just wipe the mud off it. Um, it's in 243. I use 100 grain bullets, just so it takes a good punch for a row, as well as I can go up to Red Deer as well. Um, I'm going to be using a moderator as well, especially I'm in quite a civilised area, civilization is not far away. It's another extra thing of you have to be careful of your backstops and everything. There's a lot more than just goes into it of going somewhere and shooting deer, which a lot of people kind of think that's what it's like. Um, for instance, this is the sort of moderator I'm using, it completely changes the whole sound of the rifle. As you can see as well, it's got a bipod on it and that just helps for stabilization, especially if you can get to somewhere as a prone position lying down, your, st your shot is so much steadier. However, where we're gonna be shooting here, a lot of the fields are in crop and they're too high. So we might actually be sitting on a high seat. So the bullet angles, the trajectory is going, if it goes, the bullet goes through the deer, it's got a nice safe backstop and it's, you know exactly where the bullets went. It's not gonna ricochet or end up in the next two towns. These are all the sorts of things that come into play anytime you're shooting really, whether it's shotgun, air rifle, rifles, um, just a bit of a safety thing for people that don't know too much about shooting there. Anyway, that's this all set up, so hopefully the rain's going to clear off and we're going to get out there. up enough now we're gonna go for a little donder and see if we can see them and if not we'll get it tucked in a nice little position and see if it's enough for them to come out for a feed as this is the sort of time it's getting to the time they're gonna feed and it's not because we're rain anymore so let's go this field and she's tucked in over near the hedge on the other side of this field so she's most likely got a little fawn or kid in there uh, that she's hunkered down with there's no bucks around her, but it's a good sign that if she's moving other deers might be moving in so we're gonna go to the high seat and get settled in and see if the others are gonna come out <laughs> view 
of the whole field. From that side to that side. I've got distances measured here for shooters as well. The only problem is I've got a few branches in the way. But if the deer are moving and they're happy and comfortable in this field, I should have plenty of time to let, wait until they're in a nice safe zone to shoot with a good backstop. As soon as that sun goes down it really starts to quieten off, it's a really nice peaceful night, you can hear nature, all the birds and the rabbits and everything, they're starting to, some of them come out to feed and a lot of the birds getting ready to roost for the evening. As you can see there's two row does, they just pop out from behind this wall, unfortunately I don't see a buck with them, however it's really really cool to see the does, it's kind of typical buck season as well every time you want to see a buck in buck season you just don't see one when you want to shoot does in doe season all you see is bucks however you can kind of see one of these does she's got big old belly on her it's probably not long before she uh, gives birth to her kids or kid anyway absolutely amazing to see them nevertheless also with a few extra deer ready for next year's hunting me when I was sitting in the high seat those two does that came along the wall as well feeded away you can see one of them was heavily pregnant sometimes it's not always about pulling the trigger I mean I would have loved to have a go at a buck but it was amazing just to see some deer out and about looking happy and healthy as well and with some new ones in her tummy ready for the next season so that episode was definitely something a bit different. Unfortunately, we didn't get to get the meat for the freezer. However, it was really cool seeing the does come in and seeing that they were pregnant and stuff like that. Um, we're gonna head back to Jake's house now as we're gonna get ready to go to the West Coast tomorrow. Maybe we'll have to get back out here later on in the week. You're just gonna have to see.